Batueca is one of the two active Carmelite deserts in Spain, along with the one in Palmas de Benicasi. As one approaches its intricate valley, one gets the impression of approaching the ends of the earth. In the midst of a jagged terrain formed by this semi-tropical microclimate, it maintains the structure originally designed by its descalzo, or barefoot, founders, which responds to the Carmelite norm of simplicity and austerity. But not even this place has remained on the sidelines of history. It was abandoned as a consequence of the demortization of the 19th century, and hermetic life returned to it only in the last 60 years. The massive church is strategically located in the center, embraced by the three U-shaped crossways of the cloister. Here were the cells where the monks lived, as well as the rest of their rooms. They have been painstakingly restored to their original state. As we go up this rough terrain, we see various hermitages designed to keep monks completely isolated, thus enabling them to live as hermits and practice their reformed Carmel monastic duties. The church's bells mark the times for common prayer and the rhythms of monastic life. The legends and myths of these lands spread through popular tradition and favored by the isolation this country went through until the 18th century, reinforces the feeling of asceticism and of being far from this world. The beauty of this valley is preserved by the fact that this was declared a natural reserve. Pine trees, birches, holly oaks, oaks, chestnuts, and cork oaks serve as refuge for the varied fauna in which animals like the black vulture, the stork, and the mountain goat thrive a landscape that has remained unaffected by human pressure. Convents also had a large and austere refectory, a place where those scarce moments of recess took place, as well as a wine cellar and a rainwater tank. The latter two remain very well conserved among the ruins of Bolarque. These spiritual centers are also an example of life in harmony with nature and of respect for the ecology. Here, nature is only required to provide what it can. Monks here are self-sufficient through their crop gardens and they renounce the life of crazed consumerism that characterizes post-capitalist society. The townships around the monastery, such as Alberca, also seem to enjoy the serenity that is elicited by the Carmelite Desert. As we quietly walk through this town, we can enjoy its streets and plazas, all framed in popular architecture based in stone and in geometric patterns of wood. We are in the midst of a global phenomenon that affects our environment and that is even more pressing than demons, spirits, or the sinful world of yesteryear. Contemporary terrors are as clearly pinpointed by science, but are ignored by economic interest and short-term political strategies. Notwithstanding the influential and irresponsible reality deniers, the diagnostic of our sins is clear, though the solutions are apparently less so. Based on simple-minded political calculations, many authorities refuse to clearly state what measures are necessary for the survival of our species. Are we still in time to stop the destruction of our planet? Governments and citizens seem to be more aware, a fact that is manifested by the agreements, though precarious, of the latest international summits. The youth of the world express their outrage at the slowness of the actions being taken and demand unequivocal political will and coordinated action to stop the progressive desertification that has become even more acute by climate change. It is not only minorities anymore, but an ever-growing human wave that demands strong answers and responsible measures. The road is clear. Now we must embark upon it.
deserts have to begin to show positive signs as thermometers of global climate. Scientists have shown that the recent variations in the size of the Sahara Desert are due to oscillations in climate. But though it may seem paradoxical, climate change also threatens deserts. And if they are lost, we risk losing not only animal and vegetable species, but also incredible landscapes and invaluable remains of ancient civilizations. The great lessons imparted by the men and cultures that lived in the desert and took advantage of its natural and spiritual potential are now more necessary than ever. They were able to overcome the limitations that the harsh conditions of the desert impose on mankind, and they were also able to understand that the desert is not a barrier between various groups of humans, but a place for contact and community. Hence the importance of integrating them into our lives. Deserts have unwillingly become the mirror of the future of our species in this new millennium. must observe the desert with intelligence and treat it with respect, since an important part of our destiny depends largely on its value as an oracle.